three and a half years ago, I was sleeping on a bench outside of an industrial center in Lexington, Kentucky, in a bright red sleeping bag with a hole in the bottom in 16 degree weather with my mom's cremated ashes in my lap. Lay it on my side. I could feel the wind chills giving butterfly kisses to my eyes. Every gust was like a suction cup that would suck the tears from my ducks, y'all. It was so cold that if the tears didn't waterfall off my cheek, they would sometimes freeze, and I would pick the icicles off my dimples and place them on my tongue and let them sit there until they would melt, until all I could taste was the saltiness that I felt towards myself. Like, how did I end up here. A 30-year-old man with no job, no mom, and spending the majority of my days in McDonald's building dot coms on a Toshiba laptop with a broken space bar key, living off McChicken sandwiches with coins that I used to scrape from the coin returns and vending machines, sneaking into McDonald's bathrooms with the same large McDonald's cup that I'd been drinking out of for the last month just so it wouldn't get molded, wearing the best clothes that I owned so the cashier wouldn't think that I was homeless. Because you would be amazed at how people with roofs treat people who they know that don't own them. And if there's one thing that I learned, it's that you can tell the true character of a Christian by the way that they treat people who they think can do nothing for them. Because when I was at my weakest, they were at their truest. It's like my vulnerability was a green light for their rudeness. And at a time in my life where all I needed to feel was your heart, the only thing that I felt was your shoe kicks. I remember the soul of every shoe and the shoe of every soul placed in my face. The comments that parents would make to their kids, how if they didn't listen to them, they would end up the same way that I did a druggie, somewhere strung out on the side of the road. And I'm over here making life decisions about whether do I eat tonight or do I dry my clothes. Like if I use my quarters to dry my clothes, then my sleeping bag will be warm and tonight I'll have heat, but if I don't, then in a couple days my clothes might mildew, but at least I'll have something to eat. I remember being in Lexington, Kentucky on Russell Cave and New Circle Road and laying in the street and listening to people's feet as they would walk a beat faster until they would pass me. And then they would slow back down to half speed because they didn't want their comfort to be imposed on by my tragedy. I'm sorry that my presence in this world is inconveniencing you. But when the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the son of God doesn't even have a place to rest his head, I'm sure that he felt like an inconvenience too. How many angels with broken wings have you walked by lately? How many people were tugging at the hem of your garment, but you just dismissed them as crazy? How many times have you read the signs, but you didn't read the signs when God was calling you to read in between the lines, but you just play spiritually illiterate because it's easier to be judgmental than it is to be considerate? How many lepers lay on the side of the road, robbed by life, and you just walk past? Or... Pretend like you're on your phone, then speed up and walk fast just because you don't want to be imposed on, just because you don't want to be imposed on, just because you don't want to feel convicted when you look into their eyes, just because you don't want to feel that sense of conviction, and then you have the nerve to get mad at God when he shows you the same lack of attention. Right? Helping out those who are less fortunate is not just our commission. It's our job. And to play a part in restoring the heart of broken people back to the heart of God, that should inspire you. But if you're more concerned about your blessings than the person walking on side of you, then it's time that your heart comes to the altar. Saul, it's time for you to become an apostle, Paul, because ignorance is not just bliss. Ignorance is passive persecution. People can die from your disobedience when you slack on distribution. You may not be killing them with your heat, but you're definitely killing them with your coldness. How can you expect people to feel the love of Christ if they don't even feel noticed? Three and a half years ago, for 127 days of my life, I was homeless. And if it weren't for the Caleb's and the Jamie's and the Daniel's and the Tracy's, 
and the Adries and the Brads and all the other angels in my life that I didn't know I had, I would not be standing here today at P4CM's rhetoric. I would still be sleeping in a mice-infested attic of a Baptist church. Instead of turning my life around and being promoted five times in the last three years at work. From sleeping, from sleeping in an office supply closet to having my own office, from sleeping in the backseat of my Altima to having my own apartment, to sleeping on random bitches, to sleeping on people's couch, to fulfilling a promise that I made to my mom before she died and buying her first house. God has not forgot about the ones that he loves even when everybody else does. His silence should not be mistaken for his absence. Your prayers are not being ignored. And if he's called you to a life of suffering, he's also called you to his reward. So glory in your sufferings because sufferings produce perseverance and, per and perseverance produces character and character produces hope. And when you really think about it, why would God ever trust you to be rich if he can't even trust you to be broke? Listen, listen, listen. Y these poets are out here today.